today's project is a F-150. Let's see here. It's a 2007 model. This one here has timing chain rattle in it. It uh, also has an issue with the cam phasers. We're going to go in and do what they call a cam phaser lockout kit where we'll be able to lock the cam phasers from being able to adjust so much. It's a quite highly problem with these trucks that whenever they have some miles on them that everything inside loosens up a little bit and the engine doesn't produce the original amount of oil pressure that it did whenever it was new at the factory so the cam phasers don't like to operate correctly so instead of going in and replacing cam phasers and bearings in the bottom end of the engine we're going to do a, a lockout kit where it will make them to where they're non adjustable anymore and it will create, create a much more reliable engine with doing this kit, I'm able to get a little bit better fuel mileage out of the vehicles and it produces a little bit more power and it's still very, very safe. Um, there's no noise coming from the bottom end of the engine, just timing chain rattle, of course, from, from the chains getting loose, from the phasers adjusting at the wrong time and just essentially not keeping the engine in time. So we're going to take the computer out, intake tube, the actual intake manifold, uh, alternator valve covers, front timing cover. We're going to take all that out just to go ahead and get to the chains and the tensioners and guides. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the cam phasers out and I'll go ahead and put the lockout plate in it and put it all back together with the new gaskets. And, uh, then I'll be able to go ahead and put the programmer in to turn off. It's very important to turn off the solenoids and the function in the computer that's trying to make it adjust the timing. So it doesn't not have check engine lights or, or the computer think there's something wrong with the system. So we're going to get to work on it and, uh, and uh, we should have this done by the end of the day.
Alright, so on these three valve 5.4 V8s, on the back of the intake, there's a nut that holds that, that part right there. It attaches the harness to the back side of the, the intake manifold. Then you have your wire here. This is for your cylinder head temperature sensor. So it runs through the intake manifold runner control as well as this wire and this wire here. So both of those are knock sensors. Now you also have your vacuum hose that goes to your brake booster. It'll slide off if you're gentle. So whenever I go back together with these things, I always try to avoid running these back through the intake manifold runner control. Because if you ever have to go back in and take it off, the intake back off that is, it poses a problem. Now, if you run them down and back like that, you tend to not have an issue as far as them catching anything or rubbing anything. See, and that's the actual plug for the intake manifold runner control. I'll walk over here and show you. So, this right here is the intake manifold runner control. There are little flaps inside here that this electric actuator opens and closes the flaps inside of the intake. So, and that of course is where your main vacuum goes to your brake booster from. So, but as you can see, there's actually lots of room on either side because your cylinder head comes clear up to here. So there's plenty of room to the bottom of the valley so that you can uh, run the wires underneath. I'm not sure why they designed it that way. They just did. So, and one telltale sign that the intake has been off of the vehicle before is if the nut is missing off the stud that actually holds the wiring harness. I try my best to put that nut back on, but it doesn't happen 100% of the time. Now granted, it's not going to hurt anything or affect the performance of the vehicle if that wiring harness isn't back on here. So, because most of the time it actually rests up on top here where it's not gonna interfere with anything. So, uh, this truck's got a few more problems than what we thought. We got one broken rocker arm, two broken rocker arms, three broken rocker arms, and then we got a valve spring. For a valve spring to be loose like this, it means we got a broke valve, too. So, uh, we're about to go a whole lot farther into this truck to fix it. So, I'll be back with, uh, with the short one. Well, my GoPro decided it wanted to give me some issue. So, back here is where the three rocker arms were spit off. It has broken one of the lifters. Come on. Focus. There it is. The very back one. It uh, broke the top of the lifter off of it. 
And if you look, the valve is just gone. So there's no more valve on top. So, from the looks of it, the valve on the exhaust side is still there, but that one intake valve is gone. So, and of course, that was only on the passenger side. So I did go ahead and pull the driver's side valve cover off and everything looked perfect down in. So I'm gonna have to talk with the customer and see which route he wants to go because I don't think he wants to have issues in the future with this thing. So more than likely we're just gonna go ahead and replace the engine. So I guess uh we'll have to see on part two of this what we decided. So Please like and uh, subscribe if you like what you see on this channel. Thanks.